guys, this is five minutes with Eric. I just did a one minute. So the story here is you're doing business with a friend or a family. Um, in my in my case, it's uh, it's your sister, and you know you guys have been best friends forever, and you're going into business. Now, what does going into business mean? It means you're going to be a business owner. It means you're possibly going to be selling goods or services. You're going to be competing in the market, and you're going to be trying to differentiate yourself from the competition, and you're going to be doing all the things you need to do to be a business so that you can actually make this support your livelihood and not have to go get a job. Okay, and so it's your sister, and so first things first why would you have anything in writing? So the sister, it's unclear, was she an independent contractor of your company? Is she a partner of your company? Is she an employee of your company? All these things are up in the air. We're not really sure. Nothing's formalized. And you know, I guess the point of the story is, why are we even talking about this, okay? Well, usually the reason someone ends up in my office is for one of two reasons. Either they know that bad things could happen and they don't want them to happen, and so they help me keep them out of trouble. That's mostly my corporate department or bad things have already happened, now they're trying to pick up the pieces and clean up the mess, and that's the litigation department. Um, and I will tell you that the litigation department makes 10 times more money than the corporate department. And I love the corporate guys, but most people are penny wise and pound foolish, and the lady would be like, well, why would I spend $1,500 having an agreement with my sister? She's my sister. Well, here's why. Because four years down the road, she calls one of her clients because she, she thought it was kind of funny. It was just a little customer check-in. And the client's like, oh, hey, thank you so much for the services you just did. And the lady's like, what do you mean? I, I don't, are you sure you're not mistaken? I don't remember doing anything with you recently. Oh yeah, I was just in touch with your sister. She just did a whole bunch of services for me and I paid her and you know, the check cleared and, and everything's great. And the lady's like, what are you talking about? So she goes back and comes to find out that the sister's been running a shadow business and has been stealing clients and diverting money. Now let's pretend she's not a sister for a second. Let's pretend she's an independent contractor with or without something in writing. Well, I'll get to the general within writing, but let's say it's without in writing. So it's an independent contractor. So this is a less formal arrangement than uh, an employee. Well, if it's an independent contractor with nothing in writing and they're stealing your business, there's not too much you can do, right? Uh, you kind of took a risk. The whole point of having somebody as an independent contractor instead of an employee is it's more informal, there's less rules, there's less regulations, there's less ways that you can control them. And so if they're secretly stealing your clients, then shame on you for not having something in writing that specifically says, don't steal my clients, right? That's why we invented contracts. We invented contracts because the first time somebody got screwed over by somebody else, they said, I never want this to happen again. So next time, I, next time I work with an independent contractor, I'm gonna make them sign an agreement and the agreement's gonna say that you can't steal my clients and here in Florida, you can even have it say non-compete for a period of time. Or, you know, There's other ways we can protect ourselves. The, we call them the restrictive covenants. Okay, now let's say it's an employee. Well, here you have a much better leg to stand on because with or without a writing, employees owe a duty of loyalty to their employer. That's part of the arrangement. And that's part of the fiduciary duties that we inherited from our English common law. And you could go after that employee for breaching the duty of loyalty, right? It is inherently a breach of the duty of loyalty for that client to be stealing money and clients, I'm sorry, that employee to be stealing money and clients from its employer. Um, now, wouldn't it be so much better if you had something in writing? Wouldn't it be so much better if it clearly said non-compete? And if you do, I can take you to court and I get attorney's fees and I get all these other things. And so usually, again, this is what happens. Somebody gets burned, then they realize, hey, I lost $50,000 in business. Wow, I could have had a really good operating agreement for 1,500 or a really good employment agreement or a really good independent contractor agreement that would have protected me in many, many ways. And so that's why most people don't make the same mistake twice. And then thirdly, if it's a partner and we're gonna be sharing equity, which usually means sharing profit or loss in the business, Sure, you can do it on a handshake. There's nothing in the law that says you need a contract, but trust me, on the day that you find out your partner was stealing from your business, had set up maybe a, a secret business in their boyfriend or girlfriend's name or their cousin's name or their wife's name and they've been diverting clients and you've noticed, you've been like, hmm, things feel weird. Revenue feels off. What's going on? Like something's up. And then you dig around and you find out that sure enough, they've been stealing from your business that you put in blood, sweat and tears to build. 
So please, uh, I should name my podcast, Don't Let It Happen to You, although that's a friend of mine's podcast, but that's literally the theme of most of my stories, right? Do you wanna be having a meeting with my litigation department or do you wanna be having a meeting with my corporate department? Trust me, you want it to be my corporate department. So please leave a comment below. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have about the different types of contracts that can protect your business. Thanks.